From the 2008 financial crisis to the Brexit to the rise of Donald Trump, these are, to my mind, all the signs of the Western model in deep trouble. Historically, Western political elites, say the founding fathers of the United States, were much more cautious than today's Western politicians on the issue of democracy. Most of them tended to emphasize republicanism and rule of law as a way to preempt populism, which may be brought about by the practice of democracy. But with the end of the Cold War, and with what Francis Fukuyama perceived at the end of history, one can discern clearly an arrogance on the part of the West about its political system. Western countries, especially the United States, of the end of the Cold War, have been marketing the Western-style democracy worldwide with a missionary zeal, pushing forward the so-called third wave democratization, which for a time seemed to have gathered momentum. Now, with the lapse of two decades, few positive results were registered, at least by Chinese standards. In sharp contrast, China rejects categorically the Western political model, and the country is rising fast on an unprecedented scale in human history. To me, there are certain what I call genetic defects in the Western political model. First, the rational human being assumption. Second, absolute rights. And third, omnipotent procedures. Let's discuss them briefly, one by one. First, this rational human being assumption presumes that humans can exercise their reason to think and make rational choices in casting their votes. So far, all relevant scientific studies have proven that human beings can be both rational and irrational, and even ultra-irrational, very irrational. With the growing role of the money in politics and the spread of new social media in politics, there may well be a rise of irrationality. So many politicians tend to take advantage of voters' irrationality, playing the populist card in the hope of winning votes and making more personal games. In fact, we all know Adolf Hitler came into power this way in the 1930s. The rise of the new social media today has furnished a fertile ground for expanding the irrationality of human beings, to my mind. Second, rights are absolute is also a problem, notably the overinflated individual rights and the decline of individual responsibilities. There are so many rights, each of which is exclusive, non-derogative and absolute, leading to conflict of rights. If one looks at the United States today, one finds a grave problem of mutual conflicting rights the gay rights and the rights of anti-gays, the right of those who support abortion and those opposing abortion, the rights of religious believers and the rights of non-believers, the right of privacy defenders and the right to be informed defenders, the right of the Republicans and those of Democrats. This kind of conflict causes a heavy toll to the coherence of a society and to the normal functioning of the state as in the case of the United States today. Thirdly, the belief in procedural importance is admirable, but in real practice of Western democracy, the procedures are viewed as sacred and omnipotent. Western democracy has evolved into a procedural democracy, and once the procedure is deemed the right, it does not matter whoever comes into power. Stain Ringen, an Oxford scholar, explored this dilemma facing the American political system in his book, Nation of Devils. He highlights the uncontrollable legislation as manifested in the fact that all sorts of interest groups uh, use lobbying to have their own interests protected. He described the dilemma that if the United States want to carry out reforms, it needs to amend the Constitution 
yet constitutional amendments have to go through prohibitive procedures. In other words, due to procedural reasons, reforms can hardly be authorized by American-style democracy. And how can you expect a sick man to cure a sick man? Stan Ringen deplores. Once the procedural justice has been taken as justice itself and made absolute, the consequence is often substantial injustice. As a matter of fact, many enlightened people in the West have come to realize the deep trouble with the Western political system. I remember in Belgium, after going through a crisis of more than 500 days without central government, many Belgian intellectuals published a manifesto in November 2011, vehemently criticizing the failure of the Western democracy to keep pace with the changing times. The statement says, except for democracy, innovations all over the world are everywhere. For instance, companies must continuously reform. Scientists must go beyond disciplinary boundaries. Athletes must keep on breaking world records. And artists must keep on bringing forth the new. But we're speaking of the form of democracy, social organization. Obviously, we remain self-complacent with the procedures of the 1830s. Why do we have to cling to the 200 years old curious? Democracy is a living organism, and the form of democracy is not fixed. It should continuously develop to meet the demands of our times.